World War II literally split the world into halves, bringing together ideologically diverse countries and breaking connections between previously seemingly unbreakable alliances. But the main consequences of the war are the sorrow and suffering of entire ethnic groups. By mid-July of 1941, the Nazi German High Command, OKV, made a strategic decision to further develop the operation to seize Soviet territory. In OKV, Directive No. 33 of July 19th, Hitler ordered to change the main objectives of the offensive so that before the onset of winter to take Donbass and the Crimea in the south and Leningrad, present-day St. Petersburg, in the north, by also joining with the Finns. Directive No. 33 stated, Active actions and freedom of maneuver of the northern flank of Army Group South are constrained by the fortifications of Kiev and the actions in the rear of the USSR of the troops of the 5th Soviet Army. Thus, the Wehrmacht paid special attention to the capture of the Ukrainian capital, trying to capture the city even by means of total destruction. And the ideologists of fascism were preparing another, no less horrible crime. The final solution of the Jewish question. Before the war, about 50,000 Jews lived in Kiev. With the outbreak of hostilities on Soviet territory, many fled the city to the east, inland. Others went to the front, and most of those who remained in the city were scheduled to be shot by the Nazis. The hunt for Jews began as soon as the Nazis took Kiev. Jews were caught in the streets and courtyards and beaten. Special Einsatzgruppen were formed. These Einsatzgruppen, each consisting of about 800 to 1,200 men, were formed under the leadership of Reinhard Heydrich, the chief of the security police and the SD. Officers were mainly selected from the Gestapo, the SD, the SS and the criminal police. Men were drawn from the Waffen SS, the Gestapo, the order police and the local police. In the field, the Einsatzgruppen were allowed to request personnel assistance by the Wehrmacht, which, upon request, invariably provided the necessary men. The first execution in Babi Yar in Kiev happened on September 27th. They killed 752 patients from a nearby psychiatric clinic. The Nazis, as we know, considered the mentally ill people to be human garbage. As early as by the end of September, announcements were posted all over the city, stating that all Jews had to gather at the corner of Melnikova and Doktorovskaya streets on September 29th and take their documents, valuables, and warm clothes with them. For disobedience, there was a threat of immediate execution. The SS arrested nine leading rabbis of Kiev and forced them to make a statement. After sanitation, the Jews and their children will be transported to safe places. The gathering so-called safe place was designated Babi Yar. Columns of doomed inhabitants slowly moved into eternity. Of the 3 million Jews in total who were in Nazi hands on Soviet territory, 2.825 million died, which is about 94%. Babi Yar was chosen by the Nazi commanders on purpose. The ditches and ravines there made everything easier for the executioners. They did not have to dig deep graves for thousands of corpses. In addition to this, the place was quite distant from the center of the city. It was easy to hide from curious people, and the shots couldn't be heard. Einsatzgruppe C, reporting on its operations in Kiev until October 12, 1941, stated that Sonderkommando 4A reached a total of more than 51,000 executions, number 3155. These numbers are mind-boggling. It was a veritable conveyor of death. The massacres at Babi Yar continued until the end of the occupation of Kiev in November of 1943. Hostages, underground fighters and partisans, prisoners of the nearby Saretsky concentration camp, gypsies and Kurait were shot. On January 10th of 1942, there were killed about a hundred captured sailors of the Dnieper detachment of the Pinsk military flotilla. And on February 18th of 1943, participating in the famous death match, players of the Kiev soccer club Dynamo, Nikolai Trusevich, Ivan Kuzmenko and Alexei Klimenko. Of the total number of persons destined for execution, 15 were led each time to the edge of the huge grave. There, they knelt with their faces looking into the grave. At that time, clothes and valuables were not yet collected. Later that changed. The firing platoons consisted of the Sonderkommando 4A, the militia and the police. When people were ready for the execution, one of the leaders who was in charge of the firing squad would give the order to shoot, as they were kneeling at the edge of the mass grave. The victims usually fell immediately into the mass grave. 
one of the war criminals, Wilhelm Hermann Paul Blobel. A Nazi German officer, Standartenführer SS, commander of the Sonderkommando 4A, part of the Einsatzgruppe C, which carried out mass shootings in Babi Yar, later testified. Sonderkommando 4A of the Einsatzgruppe C were originally created as death squads. Not every mentally healthy person would be able to endure hours of execution accompanied by the horrific screams of dying people. And if earlier mass shootings were carried out not only by the SS and SS security officers, but also by ordinary German police officers, civilian representatives, officers and soldiers of the Wehrmacht, then after Babi Yar, only executioners, absolutely indifferent to the suffering of others, remained in the Sonderkommando. Only the criminal of the highest caliber, Wilhelm Blobel, could command this truly refined collection of executioners and sadists. But it is not necessary to look for any moments in his biography that influenced the formation of Blobel's sadistic tendencies. Wilhelm Paul Blobel became a product of fascism, its beastly grin. Bricklayer, carpenter and architect were the main professions of the average young German, who later gravitated towards the ideas of National Socialism. Member of the NSDP since 1931, Party card 844662, a member of the SS since early 1932, SS number 29100. Global Nazi career skyrocketed. From ordinary clerk in the municipality of Solingen to the head of the SS in Dusseldorf in just two years. As coordinator of the looting and collection of valuables from the ruined synagogues in Solingen, Wuppertal and Remscheid, Blobel showed his abilities in looting and brutal treatment of the Jews. No wonder that by the beginning of the war it was exactly Wilhelm Hermann Paul Blobel who became commander of the Sonderkommando 4A. The assignment of the Special SS unit was determined precisely the extermination of the Jewish population. The former architect in charge of the assassins meticulously reported on all acts of extermination of the Jews, stating the number of those executed. According to documents of the International Tribunal, Blobel's team was responsible for the deaths of over 60,000 people. Blobel recounted his crimes in the bland and monotonous manner as the defendant. The defendant Blobel testified that his firing squads always aimed at the heads of the victims. If, as he explained, the victim was not hit, then a member of the firing squad would approach with a rifle at a distance of three paces and shoot. The scene of the victim looking at the bounty hunter approaching with his rifle pointing at him and firing at him from three paces is a horror for which there are no words. Much later, the International Military Tribunal in its decision of 1st of October 1946 declared that the Einsatzgruppen and the security police were responsible for the murder of two million defenseless people. Blobel's cynicism and indifference to the fate of others astounded even the judges involved in the Einsatzgruppen trial, years 1947-1948. When the executioner of Babi Yar was shown documentary evidence of his involvement in the deaths of 60,000 people, the former assessment cynically declared that his guilt was determined by somewhere between 10 and 15,000 people shot. Wilhelm Blobel added to his justification that faith and discipline led him to the gallows. Pathetic attempts to avoid the deserved punishment did not help this man. The commander of the Sonderkommando 4A, part of Einsatzgruppe C, who had carried out the mass shootings at Babi Yar was found guilty on all counts. The sentence, the news, was pronounced on April 10th of 1948. For several more years, Blobel was held in solitary confinement with the fear of his death. On June 7, 1951, a sergeant of the Allied Army carried out the sentence. 